Hello everybody and welcome to Keisha's World. I am your host, Keisha Charmaine Stuckey, and today I want to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and it is sexual assault. I believe that this is a topic that has been swept under the rug for a very long time, and I believe that when survivors come forward and break the silence, I believe that it's healing for the person that's sharing their story and it's healing for other people that are hearing the story. So I hope and pray that someone out there is encouraged on today from hearing my story. Um, I was raised in a beautiful, beautiful Christian home in a loving family with two Southern parents that um, made sure I had the best of everything. Unfortunately, some things happened to me outside of the home that tormented me and totally rocked my world. I was molested at the age of eight years old and I did not remember being molested until I was 21 years old. So when I found out, um, it was a difficult journey for me because um, I felt guilty <laughs> and I felt ashamed. And I know for some of you that have never experienced that, you might be thinking, well, why did you feel guilt or shame for something that you had no control of? But I was looking at it as if I, maybe I had enticed this man that was in his 20s. Maybe there was something that I did or said that made him think that he could molest me. And um, I said, well, maybe I enjoyed it, you know, but I, I did some research and found out that a lot of people that molest children are very gentle and very affectionate and research also shows that if you do experience um, any type of pleasure from being raped or molested that is totally natural because our bodies are designed to respond to sexual stimuli so you know just to eliminate any guilt or shame that anybody would feel um, that is a survivor of sexual abuse that may have experienced um, any type of pleasure. Just wanted to put that out there. Um, also, later in my life, um, I was dating a guy and um, he began to argue with me and he was um, intoxicated and um, he raped me. And um, that was very traumatic because I love this person and um, I was very shocked that um, someone that I love so much would do that to me, especially considering the fact that he knew some of the other traumatic experiences that I had been through. So in 2010, I decided to start writing about some of the experiences that I went through with being molested and sexually assaulted and raped. So I started writing a book and um, it was a pretty good experience for me. I got a chance to get some things off of my chest and um, it really helped me to heal to um, write things, these um, memories down. And while I was writing this book, I actually went temporarily blind in my right eye and it just came out of nowhere. I got tests done and the doctors couldn't figure out, you know, what was wrong. I had um, CAT scans done, different procedures done, and no one knew what was going on. So even though I was partially blind in my right eye, I just continued writing this book and I became depressed and I was going through some other things at the time too that w was causing me to feel depressed. So. Um, I started feeling suicidal and I don't know if some of you heard of that expression when you can have the devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. Well, in my case, I actually heard the audible voice of Satan tell me to take my own life <laughs> and he told me exactly where to go, um, what river to go to. He told me to tie some rocks around my ankles with rope and to just basically um, put myself in the water and just drown myself, that I had nothing else to live for. Um, and at that time I was 
in an abusive relationship and that's something that happens um, typically with people that have been sexually assaulted. Um, a lot of times they end up be in, being in abusive relationships and um, by the grace of God I was able to um, stop putting myself in a situation where I was being abused. But back to the story about <laughs> The enemy telling me to kill myself. So I went to this river where the enemy told me to kill myself and I was in tears and I was just contemplating ending my life. And um, all of a sudden I just felt the spirit of the Lord come on me and just a spirit of worship and a spirit of praise came on me. And I started to think, you know, even though I have been through so many trials and tribulations, you know, I'm still standing, I'm still here, I'm still in my right mind. And so from that day forward, I just would go to that place that the enemy told me to take my life. And I just started worshiping God there and I would go there and I would hear from God and the Lord would um, begin to speak to me. And I just started praising, just praising my way through difficult situations. And um, one day while I was there, just thinking about different things that I went through and just crying out to God, the Lord told me, he said, I've counted every tear that's every drop, ever dropped from your eyes. And I have all of your tears collected. And while he was telling me that, I could see in a vision just all this water surrounding me and before I knew it the water was surrounding me to the point that I started swimming in the water and I said Lord what does this vision mean what is all this water around me and the Lord began to say to me he said for every tear that you cried for every pain that you felt those same tears that you've cried I'm using those as healing waters and when you share your story with other women and what in other people and you let them know the things that I brought you through that same those same tears that same healing water is going to heal people it's just going to deliver people and it's going to set people free <laughs> and I said wow you know that's amazing and so I'm just grateful to God for getting me through being molested from getting me through being raped and um you know, even though I didn't remember being molested as a child, I think that something deep in my soul had a recollection of it because I went through phases, you know, phases where I would dress provocatively, um, phases where I was very um, promiscuous, you know, sleeping with random men. And I think I truly believe that I didn't have anything to offer anyone except for my sexuality. And I just really feel that when a grown-up sows a seed of lust inside of a young person, that seed has no other choice but to grow. So as a result of being molested, I did have moments where, you know, I made poor choices. <laughs> and, you know, like I said, I was promiscuous and I was really out there. So, um... Now things are different for me in my life. I've come a long way. Now I'm um, actually abstaining and I'm just waiting for, for Mr. Wright. I just believe that I'm a queen and that I'm royalty and that I deserve um, to be loved by one man. And I don't feel that I need to um, use my sexuality as a means to get attention. So... This was very hard for me to do, to just come out publicly and just share some things that are very personal. Um, but I feel like I had to face my fear and I feel like you guys that are all watching basically witnessed me kick fear in the face because right now I'm at a point in my life where I'm actually ready to finish the book and I'm ready to put my story out there. And, you know, how can I put a book out about different experience that I've gone through with sexual assault if I'm not woman enough to talk about it openly to the world, to strangers, and to all of my faithful viewers on Keisha's World. So, in closing, I just want to say that um, 
the reason why I'm still standing, the reason why I've overcome being molested and raped, the reason why today I can say I love myself is really because of God and his love, his faithfulness, you know, I've, he's really like my best friend. I pray all the time. I sing to God. Um, I've gone through therapy. I've had support from my family and friends, but really all the glory goes to the Lord. So in closing, <laughs> I just want to give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. I will sing hallelujah, I will sing, oh Lord, I will sing hallelujah, oh Lord, you are the source of my supply, and I will lift your name on high, I will sing hallelujah. I will.